Action with Pastor Jensen Franklin. You had one job. I hear that from my teenagers all the time. They're usually talking about some small thing that I forgot to do or get from the store. Who knew they were actually quoting scripture? In 1 Kings 20, there's a story where the king of Israel pretty much tells one of his soldiers, you have one job. There's a man who needs guarding. It's an assignment our king still issues to us men today. And the man we most need to guard is ourself. Let's join Pastor Franklin to learn the number one responsibility of every man. If you have your Bibles, open them with me, please, to the book of 1 Kings chapter 20. And I want to speak today primarily to everybody. But I think it'll be applicable to every person under the sound of my voice, regardless of, of what gender you are. But particularly, I want to speak to the men. As a matter of fact, I'm going to preach today on the number one responsibility of every man. The number one responsibility of every man. And it's given to us in an Old Testament story, verse 39 of 1 Kings 20. As the king passed by, he cried out to the king and said, Your servant went out into the midst of the battle. And there was a man who came over and brought a man to me and said, Guard this man. The King James says, Keep this man. Guard this man. If by any means he is missing, your life shall be for his life, or else you'll pay a talent of silver. While your servant was busy here and there, notice that, just got busy here and there, he was gone. Then the king of Israel said to him, so shall your judgment be, you yourself have decided it. The number one responsibility of every man is contained in these short verses. The story takes place on a battlefield. Battlefields in the Old Testament were noisy places. They would direct the soldiers with trumpet blasts, shofars, instruments of war, the clashing of swords and shields and the rumble of chariots and horses and the screams and the yells of men as it was in hand-to-hand -hand combat was very, very noisy, chaos, everything around you to be just, you know, just can you imagine that kind of battlefield you've seen Braveheart, you know what I'm talking about. It had to be hard to imagine anything greater than that battle they were in. And right in the middle of this kind of a battle, the king comes up and he says, I have captured someone. And he says to this particular soldier, I want you to guard this man. Your primary number one responsibility, even though there's chaos and there's a battle all around you that's raging, your number one responsibility, soldier, is to guard this man. Keep this man. The word keep or guard means to hedge in with thorns. You are to hedge him in with thorns, put perimeters and boundaries around him, and make sure that he does not escape. And to add to the seriousness of this order that he was given, he said, if this man is missing, when I come for him, then it'll be your life for his life. That's pretty serious. This is your responsibility to guard this man. I know there's a lot going on out here, but you worry about this man. I'm pulling you off of the battlefield, so to speak, to not be so engaged with this and that that's going on and this scream and this trumpet blast and this sword clash and this rumble of a chariot. I want you to be focused more than anything else on hedging with thorns and guarding this man. Your one charge in the midst of the warfare and chaos is to keep him, to guard him. Don't get distracted with the clanging of the swords. Your charge is to keep this man as if your life depends on it because if you lose this man, you lose yourself. You lose your life if you lose this man who must be guarded. If anything happens to this man, it's your life for his life. And the Bible said when the battle was over, the king came back. The dust settled. The warfare was over. 
And the king himself came back. And ladies and gentlemen, our king is coming back to earth again. And when the king came back, he wanted to know one thing from that soldier. Did you keep, did you guard the man that I gave you the responsibility for? Where is the man that I gave you charge of? And in this particular case, the Bible said that the man escaped. Where's the man that I, that I told you you need to worry about more than anybody else? Where's the man? How could this have happened? How, what was so important that it could have distracted you from the one assignment that I gave you? And that was to guard this man and watch this man and keep this man. Explain yourself. Were you overpowered by the enemy? No, no, sir. Were you seduced by a woman? No, sir. Well, did you forget the charge that I gave you to guard this man? No, sir, king, I didn't. His answer was a classic. Notice what he said. He said, I just got busy here and there. The king said, so shall your judgment be. You have lost the man, therefore you will lose yourself. It's going to cost you your life if you don't watch this man. The soldier wanted the king to know that the man wasn't missing and didn't escape because he was lazy. He began to explain, I wasn't lazy, I was busy. I was busy here and there. And I got distracted and I forgot about guarding the man. He had been very busy here and there. He was busy over here and over there, distracted and hindered from keeping the man. Engaged in a lot of busy things, like all the men I'm preaching to at every one of our campuses, we're all busy men. Like most men, he had responsibilities. This isn't my only life, just church stuff and living for God. I have responsibilities. I have a house payment. I have a car payment. I have to take care of my family. I have to keep up our lifestyle. I've got, I've got to get up and go to work. I've got to pay bills. I've got children that need my attention. I'm a very busy man. I was busy here and there, and I forgot to guard this man the king told me was my number one responsibility in this life. You don't understand. This isn't the only thing I have to do, church stuff. I have a lot of obligations and I have a lot of responsibilities and I just got busy, king. The man said he would stay here. He promised me that I didn't have to worry about him, that he would stay behind the thorny hedge that I put him behind. He even crossed his heart. That's in the Bible. I'm making this up. But he even crossed his heart and hoped to die. He, he swore that he gave me a Boy Scout honor that he would stay there and I could just be doing my busy stuff. And, and it probably wasn't some quick thing. It was just a gradual thing just here and there and probably got a little further away from where he had him hedged in. And then he thought, I need to do this. And oh, oh yeah, I remember my number one responsibility is to guard that man and keep that man. And oh, oh but I'm going to go a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. And before he knew it, he turns around because he's, he's thinking about it less and less and less and less. And the man has escaped. I'm saying to you today that that man, the king, knew he needed to be guarded. That's your old nature. If you haven't figured this sermon out yet, you're a little slow. I'm going to help you with it. <laughs> the king is Jesus. And he says to every man, your number one responsibility is you are this man. You are to guard who you are. You are to guard your heart with all diligence. You are to keep this man. Keep him from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You're to hedge him in with thorns and have some perimeters and some boundaries and some standards that you don't just let him go wild because this man is a liar. This man, you can't believe what he will do. He'll tell you he won't do things, but if you don't guard him, if you don't watch him, if you don't hedge him in, he's crazy. He's a wild man. Your flesh cannot be trusted. But Paul said there's no good thing in my flesh. 
And you have to guard this man. He'll try to get out. You have to hedge him in with thorns. The soldier was not a bad man. He was just a busy man. He was trying to accomplish things for his life and maintain a lifestyle for his children. He, he was just like most of the men here. Got something supposed to do, busy here, busy there, got a flat tire. Why didn't you go to church? Got to mow my grass. Why weren't you there last week? Well, we had to go get groceries. And why weren't you there the week before? Well, I had this and I had that. And it's not, he's not a bad man. He's just a busy man. And you're not guarding the spiritual man. He didn't lose the man on purpose. Most of the time, it's just we just drift away little by little, just a little here and a little there. And before you know it, you're far from God, far from who you once were, far from the character that you had, the anointing that you had, the presence of God. You have to guard this man. You have to keep this man worshiping and praising God. Keep this man in church. Keep this man paying his tithes. Keep this man in obedience to the Word. Keep this man reading the Word of God. Your number one priority is not not your children, is not your wife. They are going to have to answer to God for themselves. And here's the deal. Well, I'm so worried about my children. If I don't keep this man, there's no way I'm going to win my children. If I don't keep this man, there's no way I'm going to influence my wife. If I don't keep this man, there's no way that I'm going to have an impact on hundreds of men under the sound of my voice right now. The key to this thing is I have to keep this man. I have to keep him from pouring on the internet. I have to keep him from a bad attitude. I have to keep him from wrong television shows or on, on satellite TV. I have to keep him. And we don't like to talk about this stuff, but the truth is if you don't hedge this man in and guard this man, the enemy will cause that man to escape. And if you lose him, you lose yourself. We get so busy, and the man is gone. Who is the man? The world is a battlefield. The battlefield is the flesh, the world, and the devil, and there's noise, and there's chaos. But one day, the king is going to come back, and when the king comes back, he's going to ask one question. Did you keep this man? Did you guard this man? Every man is drawn away when he is tempted by his own lust. Peter summed it up in Acts chapter 2 when he said, Save yourself from this wicked and perverse generation. A man's greatest responsibility is to keep this man. And folks, there's never been a time when there was more opportunity to live immoral and get all kinds of stuff attached to you, but I have to keep this man from addiction. Keep this man from alcoholism. Keep this man from perversion. Keep this man from doing things that he shouldn't do. And you have to hedge this man in with the thorns of the hedge of the Word of God. I get so tired of this little nicey, nicey, always just live like you want to live. No, there's some of this that once Jesus saves you, he says now you got a spirit and the spirit is saved. But you got a body and you better learn how to hedge that body in. You better learn how to bring your body under subjection. Paul said, I buffet my body. I'm brutal on myself because I know I can't let my flesh do what it wants to do. So I have to keep this man because the trumpet's going to sound and the king is going to come. And when he comes back, he's going to ask, did you keep this man? If I'm not a godly example, then my children won't be saved. Most of the men who were lost in the Bible were not lost in the battle. Samson did awesome in the battle. The Bible said at times, everybody say at times, the Spirit of the Lord began to move on him at times. And the power of God would come on him and he would fight a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey and kill him. My Lord, he would, he, at times, the Spirit would come on him mightily, one place said, and he, and he, and he, and he, he slew a lion with his bare hands, ripped his jaws to pieces. That's powerful. 
And anybody can live for God when the Spirit of God is upon you mightily. But what about the in-between times? We've got to learn the art of living for God in the in-between times when we're not in a service and they're not singing praise songs and everybody's mind is on good things. But I want to know, what about in the in-between times when you're not in a mighty service and you're just out living life? That's when I've got to use, listen, big word, discipline to keep this man. Keep his anger, keep his tongue, keep his heart, keep this body, keep his mind, keep his eyes, keep his ears, keep everything under subjection. Thorn him up in a hedge and say there are limits. There are things that I will not let you do. And see, there will be times when God will move mightily and that's important. When you'll get in services, if you come to a good church like this, there will be services. We've had them recently where people were, were just overwhelmed by the presence of God. But most of the time, it's not the Spirit of God is on me mightily. Most of the time, it's in between time. And I'm just going to work and I'm just doing life and I'm just living and I'm just paying bills. That's when I've got to keep this man. <laughs> oh, this generation needs to hear this. And here's the deal. If you can keep this man in the in-between times, boy, when you get up and you preach or you sing or you minister or you've got a call on your life and business, the Spirit of God will come mightily on you because God watches what we do in the in-between times more than He does what we do when he, it's mighty. My greatest times of prayer and ministry are not in this pulpit. They're when I'm walking my little trail in the woods and I'm talking to the Lord because I've learned the secret to this thing is what I do in the in-between times. I've got to keep this man in prayer. I got to keep this man fasting. I got to keep this man reading the Word of God. I got to keep this man going to church. You got to guard this man. I love my family. I die for them. I take a bullet for any one of them just like that. But the Lord said, the greatest thing that I can do for my family as I study in this message is just keep this man. Because if you keep this man, you'll influence Drake and you'll influence Courtney and Carissa and Caroline and Connor. You'll influence Sharice if you'll just keep this man. Keep him in prayer. Keep him godly. Keep him holy. Keep him loving Jesus. Keep his heart pure. Keep his eyes pure. Keep his spirit pure. Don't let anger and bitterness and wrath get a hold of you. St stay clean before God. Hedge him in if you have to. Have some boundaries. Some, uh, You know, uh, a battery has positives and negatives. All we've got is a positive gospel now. But if you want power... You can't just hook up the plus. You know, he's got a plus and it's got a minus on your battery, your car battery. Do any of you men know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you can't just have, you, if you just hook up the jumper cables to the, to the positive side, oh, you're never going to crank the engine and get power. you got to have some negatives too. You need some thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill. Thou. You need that thorny hedge if you want power. I guess what I'm trying to say to you is the reason the king said keep this man, hedge him in with thorns is you can't trust you. You look real good in church. I look, I look like a preacher almost except my shirt tails out and that ain't right. But, 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 but most of the time, you know, I look like a preacher, I guess. I, goes, I don't know. But, but I, I, I try to be like a preacher, live right, but the truth is, you can't trust you. I'm a preacher and I don't even trust me. If I put myself in situations, if I don't have the hedges up, I don't trust me. You lie to yourself. I'll never do that. And then you just look around and someday it's just, he's just wandering off. He's just wandering off. 
there's an old preacher who took a trip with a bunch of younger preachers on a mission trip for, for, for nine days. True story. This old bishop got on the plane and those young men, all of them, about seven of them, had not seen their wives in nine days. And they were ready to see their wives. Do I need to explain that to you? They were ready to see their wives. And he said, God is my witness. While we were sitting there on the, on the runway, on the jet, the jet was loading. All of us had seats together. He said, there was a woman who walked in who was absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. And he said she had a biblical dress on, lo and behold. And, and oh my goodness, she, she had a figure like a Coke bottle. And if you don't know what a Coke bottle is, I said, whatever. This generation needs a lot of help. But she had it. She was a brick house. Come on, do you understand that? She had it. And every one of those young preachers, he said, he looked around and he said they were... They all forgot about their Bibles and their missionary trip and everything, their mind. And he said, I spoke up, listen to this. And he said, I said right out loud on the plane as she was walking by, good job, Jesus. <laughs> Instantly they came right back in when they heard that name. I love that. Good job, Jesus. That same preacher told me, he called me one time. He said, Jansen, he said, there's two reasons why I don't commit adultery. Number one, God's against it. Number two, they tell. Click. <laughs> now that'll save your life right there. We need some plain talk to men to say you better keep this man and God's against it and don't you ever fool yourself. Sooner or later, they tell. You can't trust you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can't trust you. You better keep this man. You better keep him from idols. John said, keep yourself from idols. What's an idol? I looked it up. Putting anything before God is an idol. Wow. Nothing comes before God for me and my family. Nothing. Nothing comes before God. If it does, it is an idol to you. And you're not keeping this man. Lift your hands high for just a moment. No one moving. And say, God, I realize today like never before. You've not put me over a, a, a platoon. You didn't tell me to keep this company, keep this, 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 this whole army. You told me to keep this man. The one, number one responsibility of my life is to keep this man. Today, I give you myself again. God is calling Kingdom Connection to expand our reach, and we are ready to answer that call. Together, we can take Kingdom Connection to major metropolitan communities across the United States on networks such as ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. We already reach around the world through Christian television networks, but we are ready to take the hope and message of Jesus to the lost and hurting people in the cities where they live. With your gift this month, you will join Kingdom Connection in sharing the gospel with an even greater reach. When you give a gift of $40 or more, you can request Jensen Franklin's new three-CD series, The Exchange 2.0. This teaching series will encourage you to release what's in your hand to experience the blessings of the exchange. To learn more, call us or visit JensenFranklin.tv. You can also follow Pastor Franklin on Insta or Twitter at Jensen or on Facebook at backslash Jensen Franklin. Hope starts with you. Together, we can do something incredible for the kingdom of God.
I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest Everybody on the face shit I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest I make this Every day and I'm impatient Hoping one day I blow up from the basement Statement The top is so vacant I don't need shit that I think is amazing Waiting For my day when I'm playing Sold out shows for a thousand faces Hey, Give me that crown Get in my way and you'll be put down It ain't your place All this my town If I want that shit then I'll get it right now I'm losing it The noose if it's some loose shit A stupid myth You choose to live or choose to dip You choose to fight or lose your grip And lose a gift Oh I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign Yeah! There's no mercy in this world, just hunger, thirsty persons In different versions, each new update, that shit worsens Why? Pull back the curtain and you'll see the different vermin We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance Yo, so do me a favor, don't treat me like a neighbor Don't need the different flavors of your problems just to savor I've got my own issues, I need a comb to get through Don't need to groan with you, just go get your own tissue I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign